So some of these doomsday scenarios that FICA is going to close off foreign, foreign collaborations, if that is correct, uh, we as a government because must have suddenly gone mad. Because in a country like Singapore, which depends so much on the flow of ideas and international collaboration, is that even thinkable? But the difficulty we face at MHA, and which many other countries face in, in dealing with this foreign interference issue, is that out of 10,000 interactions, one might be the sort that we are interested in, where there is an attempt to interfere. And foreign agencies, and even non-agencies, NGOs, others, will try and present a legitimate front. So the language has got to be broad enough to cover that, that what is apparently normal, but is actually not normal. So you've got to look carefully at what they are doing. What are all the factors taken in overall? Using the proportionality test. What sort of issue are they focusing on? What's the possible impact? Is there funding involved? But the, the central guiding principle that Singaporeans should primarily decide on issues of importance to ourselves. If you turn specifically to academics, questions have been raised about their collaborations with non-Singaporeans. They collaborate, create, partner, pursue their research interests professionally. No HIC. It doesn't come within FICA. So the bill will not affect the vast amount of academic work that is being done. We value the intellectual output, collaborations, exchange of ideas, the work our academics do. And they need to link with the rest of the world for work, bona fide and professional work, not affected. It is important for Singapore. But in some situations, there are academics who go into a different realm around the world, and they are dealt with like we did with Huang Jing. Others who have been actively trying to put out misinformation about the bill. A chief amongst them, Mr. Tham and Ms. Kirsten Han. Tham and Han, as I said in 2019 in the conference, uh, take money from George Soros. Uh, some of you may recall Soros Open Society Foundations, OSF, as a history of getting involved in the domestic politics of sovereign countries. So in 2018, Accra rejected Tham and Han's attempt to register a company funded by OSF to organize democracy classroom sessions in Singapore. They have set up an organization called New Narrative, which receives significant foreign funding. New Narrative organized a series of democracy classrooms focusing on Malaysia and supported by the US Embassy in Kuala Lumpur. Make no mistake about it, we will say no to that in Singapore. You can organize democracy classrooms. We have no issues. Anyone can organize. Anyone can criticize the current state of democracy. But it cannot be funded by Soros or the US Embassy or any other embassy. The nature of activity and who the funding is from will have to be considered in this context. Tham wants our Independence Day to be 16th of September, which is Malaysia Day. He regrets that Singapore separated from Malaysia. On several occasions, he has publicly said that Singapore should become part of Malaysia again. Tham and Han and some other activists met with Dr. Mahathir on the 30th of August 2018. He asked, they asked Dr. Mahathir to bring democracy to Singapore. I suppose Malaysian style democracy. Han described a social movement as, and I quote, the work that goes into potentially one day having 500,000 people on the streets. She has also said, when the government says foreigners should not influence domestic affairs or foreigners should not bring their country's politics into Singapore, we should push back on that as well, because why not? Because solidarity is important. Her view is that Malaysians can influence our politics. She says so openly. So members can see why the two of them are very concerned that FICA will focus on foreign funding and have been mounting their own disinformation campaign. Tham has meanwhile written a commentary calling this bill a stealth coup, stealth coup by me. Basically, that I am personally going to take over Singapore and all my colleagues 
have to be very concerned. And I suppose a coup means that I take over from the Prime Minister. A coup in Singapore. Prime Minister needs to be very concerned too. It requires a turn of mind, completely at odds with reality, and living in fantasy to think of a coup in Singapore. So members can see there is no limit to the absurdities and fantasies that some will put out. And an Oxford education is in itself does not immunize one from spouting such nonsense. But I can see that they are concerned. Han has said in arguing against this bill that it's difficult to get money for these causes in Singapore. So foreign funding is necessary. So you can see, I mean, if Singaporeans are excited about it, interested, they will contribute. Well, because they won't contribute, therefore I need foreign funding. And we will look at the petition later that's being put up in Parliament by PSP. And I think members can look at it in the context of who inspired them and how today's PSP is completely aligned, it appears, with what Tham and Han want to achieve. Mr. Speaker, sir, if the points raised in the petition, assuming it is the same petition that we see online, I am dealing, I have dealt with most of them, I am dealing with them. We can debate the points today, and I would say Parliament can fully consider and debate the points today. There's no need to do it at another session.